we were just talking about what a tip of the hat to uh, Sergio Leone and, and those great Westerns and, and just, you know, it's a revenge movie, but it's a father daughter film. It's, it's got the colorful characters that you want in a Western. And I think people miss this. Well, I think it, yes, I, I completely agree with you. I think in a way, the old way is very much the old way of, of, of delivering entertainment to, to the public, uh, you know, and the nice twist, Ryan did a wonderful, wonderful job playing Nick's daughter. Um, you know, so I, I think it, it, I believed in it. I believed in it when I first heard about it. Um, and I believe in it now. And I, I do think, I, you know, I, I do think that the audience is going to find it and appreciate it. And of course, you cannot deny Nick Cassavetes. No. I mean, there, there is just something about Nick. He's, he's watchable. First of all, he's a great dude. I, I've known him for a long time. He's a great dude. And, and he's just, there's, listen, not to get lame about it, but he's got the it factor. Yeah, so, you, you know, th there it is. Anyway, I'm, you know, it's, it, I love talking about the old way. Strapping on, uh, you know, the Western outfit uh, and, and all of that. You must have had a ball doing this. Oh, yes, I did. It was a blast. I hadn't been on a horse in a long, long time. And, and uh, you know, it was something that, that um, my wife, Kat, and I were a, a little leery about at the beginning. Uh, but but she was very encouraging and it, it was a matter of, yes, I can do this. And, you know, I did all my own stunts. I, I got <laughs> shot. I got shot by myself. I shot people and I, I, I got shot by on my, myself. So it was a wonderful experience. And listen, as I get older as an actor, mm. it's really fun for me to get to kind of morph into a different kind of character. I mean, Eustace is 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 something I've never played. I mean, I'm just now beginning to play old guys, you know. And Eustace is an old guy, and 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 you know, um, he's sore in the saddle, and he, you know, he doesn't really appreciate. That. No, Eustace doesn't really like where he's at, but it's his best option to run around with these bad guys. It's the best chance he's got. Yeah, in the '60s, he would have been played by Walter Brennan. Yeah, very much so. I, 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 I guess somehow, you know, I don't watch a lot of movies. Really, uh, Walter, somebody mentioned somebody somewhere mentioned that I seem like Walter Houston, uh, uh, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, um, Treasure of the Sierra Madre, I believe, mm. which is a movie I sadly failed to have ever seen. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, Walter Brennan, the crusty old guy. Thanks to COVID. I, I had that beard going. Good. So Eustace, no, Eustace, Eustace had the great beard and, and they, you know, Brett put me in a great costume and uh, it, it was, I, it was very well shot, beautifully shot. And also, let me also tip my cap to Noah, yeah. the, the fellow who played the lead of the bad guys. I, I felt like he nailed it. You know, I felt like he really played that kind of psychotic dude that, that, you know, is chilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, and when you have characters like this, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, Nick Cage is on the poster and blah, 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 but all of these characters support that, 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 that star. And if they're no good, nobody's good. Well, yes. I, you know, first of all, it starts with the material, you know, I, listen, I felt like, <clears throat> I felt like that fundamentally the script was in really good shape. Um, and, and he gave us all a lot to do. Brett took that material and, and, you know, in, in a pretty fast manner, granted, this wasn't, you know, this was not, um, um, heaven's gate or anything like that. We had to shoot fast. We shot fast, you know, very much old school. And, uh, you know, what we did, I, I'm, I feel really proud of and the characters, it was fun. Yep. It was fun. And, you know, I, I enjoyed watching it. First of all, for an actor to be asked to get on an airplane and fly to Montana to work on a movie for several weeks and be outdoors in some of the most beautiful country in the world, what a treat. And they're actually paying, they're paying us for this. This is great. Sign me up. And they feed you. 
Oh, yes, they feed me. Although, let's face it, I don't want to I don't want to blow anybody's covers. But on this little small little independent movie, sometimes the <laughs> catering <laughs> might have been a hair short. You bring I think, your own lunch. Well, no, I think actually there was one time where the crew was beginning to to uh, to revolt and the producers had to go down to the store and buy a bunch of like premium hamburger meat and hamburgers. And at the end of the day, they kind of made up for it for having this big hamburger feast. So anyway, <laughs> hey, when you make an independent movie, when you make yeah. a small little movie, there is a certain spirit about it. There's sure. a certain kind of all for one, one for all. My, you know, my days of working on Roger Corman movies, it yeah. was, you know, it, it, problems be damned. We're going to make this picture. You yeah, know, you pull and through. I, you 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 push through. Yes, yes, and and have a good and listen. I'm I'm blessed, I, and I have a good time doing it. What a great training ground that was with Roger Corman. Oh, are you kidding? It was awesome. Roger Corman fundamentally taught so much about the process of making movies. Mm-hmm. I know Ron and I, I you know, talk about it all the time. I mean, Ron uh, Roger gave my brother a couple of just simple fundamental tips to directing that he still uses to this day. And Hey, listen, you don't need, you don't need the world to make a movie. You just need what you're trying to show. You know, it's, it can be relatively narrow. It can also be broad and you can, you can cheat, but it, it, you know, you can go fast. You should go fast. Listen, one thing I feel like as a filmmaker, as somebody that participates in the entertainment business, is you do have to you you do have to honor the investment money. There are people that invested good solid money to make a movie. And by God, we wouldn't be there working on the film if it wasn't for the investors. So we need to give our full attention to doing our very best job day in and day out at a fast pace to get this movie made because if it wasn't for the investor money, we wouldn't be working. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Especially, you know, keeping independent film alive is, is getting harder and harder and, and, and then doing Westerns. I mean, I love this, you know, circle that, that we've been through that Westerns are starting to make a comeback thanks to, you know, uh, uh, Taylor Sheridan and, and uh, you know, the Cosners out there that, that really believe that, you know, this is a fundamental uh, story that America tells. It's it's just a wonderful, uh, you know, step back into great storytelling. Well, yes, gr- you you just nailed it. Great storytelling. Great storytelling happens between you know people, people. Whether it be, I mean, well, like you you nailed it with Costner and Yellowstone. You know, now Yellowstone isn't quite a Western, but it's got the themes of a Western, Yeah. you know, and in the old way, first of all, I'm really proud. I'm proud of Brett. You know, if you would have been there, you'd you'd be proud of him, too, because he worked his ass off. You know, we all worked. we, We should all be proud of it because, you know, we worked hard and we delivered something that I think is going to last. And you mentioned something about the independent movie kind of struggling a little bit. Um. Maybe I'm more of an optimist. I look at it a slightly different way. With all the streaming platforms, with all with the ability for most Americans to be able to view top flight entertainment in their home, let alone on their phone, which yeah. is a little sad. That's another story. But for for the opportunity to deliver entertainment to these people gives us a lot of options. I mean, listen, I'm I'm in the process of of working of getting an independent movie made, mm-hmm. and it just seems like the streaming services are very interested because they need product. Yeah, they need content. Content. Yeah, is king. yeah, yeah. I, I you know years ago I worked on a little horror movie called Ice Cream Man, mm-hmm. and myself and Norman, the the director and producer of the first Ice Cream Man, we decided to get together and do another Ice Cream Man. So. <laughs> You know, very much on a small little independent level. And, uh, you know, the, that process of, of being creative, like Brett was being creative on the old way, like Carl was being creative on the old way, uh, was uh, is, is very exciting for me. You know, and you, you <clears throat> when you talk about your career and, and it's a lot of hard work, but uh, 
I also, you know, uh, want to say you are one of five actors that have appeared in every, uh, you know, kind of I- incarnation of Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> that's got to be fun. The, the fans must love you at the conventions. Well, yes, they do. I listen. I, I, they, they do appreciate me. Um, they, they do respect me, and and I respect that. I, I really do appreciate that. I probably didn't appreciate it quite so much earlier in my career, and maybe I've managed to take a step back and uh and and kind of see that yes you know i'm in i'm in a unique spot the work is hard mm-hmm. i'll tell you ab- about acting the work really isn't that hard there are days that are hard the hard part is when you're not working the hard part as an actor is when the phone doesn't ring mm-hmm. and i was so lucky with my mom and dad you know, they're the ones that really had the dream to get into the business. And, and they managed to, you know, by circumstance, get my brother and myself into the business. Um, my dad was a journeyman character actor. And, you know, we could feel when the phone's not ringing, he doesn't have a chance to earn a livelihood. And it, it starts to wear on you. That's the hard part. That it's psychologically that plays that plays a toll on you. Um, but, you know, when you're out on the set, like like when we were on location working on the old way, I mean, my goodness, you know, you're there sitting, you're sipping on a cup of coffee, looking at some of the most beautiful scenery in the world, getting ready to play cowboys and Indians, so to speak. I mean, what what more could a what more could a person ask for? Yeah, and in our final moments, we have, and God bless you, Clint, for uh, just coming on and chatting with me. I I met your dad on a couple of occasions here in Utah on sets, and what a what a fantastic human being he was kind gentle and and, and just so articulate and uh, you know he could he knew lots of different things other than movies i mean he was a, just a a really intelligent guy well thank you yes no my brother and i are, were blessed to be the son of rance howard yeah. and uh, and my goodness i mean on a on a daily basis whether it's working around the entertainment business or working around the house uh, I'm always thinking about pop and thinking about how would he do this? Uh, you know, I, raising children, how did he do it? How, my goodness, my dad, you know, I, uh, once in a while, those thoughts about thinking about how would dad do it leads me to feeling a little sad because, you know, we lost dad a few years ago and, and he's not around. I, in fact, this past Christmas, it was, I really, a few times I really want to get on the phone and call him and I just couldn't because he's gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can call him in the spirit. But but yes, no, thank you for bringing him up. I mean, what a what a I owe it all to him and mom. Yeah. And a well, little bit to my brother, a little bit to my brother because he's my older brother yeah. and I love him. Ooh. Mostly dad, mostly mom. And a I heard bit. you had a brother, but, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, Clint, take care. Uh, uh, this is really the first time I've ever had a chance to talk with you. I met you a couple of times here and there, but um, I would love to do a longer, longer interview with you. But uh, hey, there's time for well, that. Okay, well, you know, also, please, you know, I have a, I, thanks to Kat, I, I have a presence on social media now that's pretty okay. strong. It's, it's Clint Howard official. Okay, I'll, I'll, on Twitter. And circle back and DM me and, and yeah, we can do something longer, maybe. 